heading up to Malibu Bluffs now, back in the Hyundai Ionic. I'm gonna introduce you guys to a guy named Steven, who is an architect. This guy is a, an interesting designer and architect. Uh, he is known for creating unique spaces out of tiny spaces. We'll learn about him, and he also has a brand new 2018 Jeep Wrangler, which I'm kind of excited about. Love that car. But let's go find out more about him. I got nothing else to do. This is Steve, and he is a, a very unique architect, has done some really incredible stuff, some really neat stuff. I'm excited to delve in to some of the things you've done, but today you brought out this brand new Jeep Wrangler. Yep. My company is SF Jones Architects, mm -hmm. and I, I design social spaces, uh, primarily restaurants. Um, I did actually Bui Sushi right over here in Malibu. Okay. You have to like the food in order to do the architecture. You know what? It always helps. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of work with Wolfgang Puck, and the, the, the whole thing, he would always bring out food and feed us. That's the punch, right? <laughs> it's like journalists. As long as you feed them, they'll write something they'll write great. Something good. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. I urge you guys to go and check out uh, Steve's stuff because it's really incredible. But, and as much as I want to uh, talk architecture, which we will a little bit, but, uh, you brought the Wrangler out. We're going to take a spin up the coast, take a, a photo for the paper, Great. and talk a little bit. All right. I love this car. I know, isn't it? You know, you can never get enough of Jeeps. The brand has been around since 41, yeah. right? What, what was the impetus? Why, why did you decide to get this? I had a, a Land Rover for a while that was kind of the same shape. Right. But, um, you know, recession hit and I had to cut some expenses. Yeah. So I'm like, I was going to get another car and my daughter, uh, I took her to go see a Jeep Cherokee and then I said, you know, when I was in college, I had one of these, um, uh, I had a CJ5, a 75 yeah. CJ5. Right. So I said, one day I'm going to get another another Jeep. Yeah. And so we, my, my daughter said, well, let's test drive it. And I'm like, oh, we can. Yeah. So I got in and I drove it. I'm like, wow, this drives a lot <laughs> nicer than my yeah. old one. Yeah. I went to uh, University of Florida undergrad and then UCLA grad school. Okay. And, and did you always want to be an architect? I always wanted to be an architect. Yeah. I mean, I think when I was in seventh grade, I took my first drafting woodworking class. Yeah. And uh, took drafting the next year because it was an easy A. I'd, say, I'd like to say I designed social spaces. Right. And social spaces can be anything from restaurants to spas to gyms to I yeah. mean, places where people interact with each other. Right. And so, what, what uh, Starbucks, what Starbucks did, could be considered a social space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a different take on it. Man. So, a lot of the types of projects that I that I, I'm working on are some kind of variation of social spaces. Yeah. One of the things happening a lot right now is that um, you know the work environment is changing. People oh, yeah. don't want to you know be in little cubicles. They want to be in creative space. Mm -hmm. You know, people were for a while. Um, you know, being able to work at home. And yeah. that was a big luxury until they realized that it's boring at home. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, places like Starbucks kind of came out of the fact that people wanted to have some, some kind of, be some kind of a place other than at home walking, you know, right. with their dog barking while they're trying to do work. Autonomous cars can become a social space, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, no, I'm like looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna keep my Jeep until uh, I can, get a car that I don't have to drive. Yeah, and, and that's interesting because you could, as an architect, you could design a social space inside a car. You could, absolutely. In fact, there's one that I saw at the LA um, uh, car show, mm -hmm. this Japanese car that was exactly that. Like the inside was very boxy and the inside right. was literally like a workstation. Yeah.
kind of like taking this idea of uh, of the shipping containers or small or the tiny restaurants and creating um, more of like an outside outside seating area mm -hmm. that's um, that to use uh, the shipping containers or the small module right to um, to be like the, the working environment yeah. and um, so I think there's like a lot of different applications that that can that you can put that on. so sure the one thing about architecture is that you know you you grow into it, and the older you get, it's more more refined you, the more knowledge you have for mm -hmm. the thing. So you be patient with that. You know? Thank you. All right. Very fun. Very, very fun. Good. Very cool. Young lady, how you doing? Good. Uh, today we're going to have a, a little bit of fun. We're going to drive down to a place in Culver City. Well, actually, I think it's. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's uh, called LA Cycle Sports. We're gonna buy you a motorcycle. Awesome. I would rather go to a Harley dealership than <laughs> get a hog. Yeah. You're gonna become a motorcycle mama like Brenda. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to this place and they're gonna be giving me a Vanderhall, which is a three-wheeled motorcycle car. Okay. That kind of thing. I'm getting a little tired walking up this hill. I know, and you know you're making it worse on me by leaning on me. <laughs> south we still have this car through Monday although I'm, I may not be driving it much considering what I'm going to pick up right now in fact I definitely won't be driving this much <laughs> if at all doing that weird thing? no it's actually driving fine now Wow. it was doing something uh, a little strange I'm not really sure what it was but it seems to be has worked itself out it itself. yeah that's a good thing maybe there's a uh, semi-autonomous mode or there's an AI involved in this but I think a little robot in there fixing yeah. things. <laughs> but before we go to pick up the car, I think it's time to get some coffee. You said but. I did, you know, I did say but, which is um, apropos, considering we're going to the cow's end for coffee. That's weird. If you've never been to the Cow's End, it's in Venice. We haven't been there in a long time, but the coffee was good. They took the surfboards down. What?
you have been here a long time, man. I've been here 50 years. 50 years. 5 -0. We're at the Cow's End in Venice, and this is Clay, uh, the owner, proprietor, and builder of this place. That's right. Why, why coffee? Was that it's part of my subculture. Yeah. I was born in Panama, ah. a Latino country. Yeah. And I was drinking coffee at five years old. <laughs> I know here that was yeah. taboo, yeah. but it was like orange juice for us yeah. in, in, in Panama. Yeah. And then I moved to Chicago when I came to this country with my mother. The second town. And a little, well, all, every little neighborhood, yeah. because Chicago is segregated. Yeah. Not by race, yeah. that's it, but by culture. Right. And you have a little coffee house in a Polish neighborhood, and yeah. the Latino. And all the coffee's different. It is. Yeah. And that inspired me to do it here. So I'm kind of living my life like I don't, mine. I don't know who can say that they've been been at a place for 50 years. I know. But obviously you've done something right. Yeah. You know, and every time I come over here, you're out here talking to people. You obviously love it. I do. You know. Look, you come to my front yard. Yeah. Because I live up on the third floor and the fourth floor <laughs> with my wife and daughter. Yeah. And so you're coming to my house every day. Everybody I want to talk to comes here yeah. and leaves money. Yeah. How many people go to your house and leave money? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's I awesome. love it. It's, yeah. uh, it's well, my way of intermingling with people from all over the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they come from all over the world. Absolutely. Straight from the airport, right over here. You don't know how many times people have told me. I landed at LAX, came from Australia, and rented a car, yep. drove directly to the cow's end. Yeah. Well, I, I'll go to the airport, fly out to Australia, and come back just to come here. How about that? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some Joe and a chocolate croissant, because it's calling my name. Salute. LA Cycle Sports. This is where I'm picking the Vander Hall up. I guess they're going and getting there. Just some classic mopeds here. Very cool. Uh, I've never been here before. Not necessarily a bike guy, although I have tremendous respect for bikers and for um, the machinery itself. Some great stuff. But I, I like things like this. Yeah, yeah, that's my kind of thing right there. Bikes. Uh, a lot of great stuff here. Kawasaki's, Suzuki's, all kinds of neat stuff. Kind of hard to tell. Kind of looks like a big mishmash of craziness. Uh, the guy just gave me the Vander Hall. It's freaking awesome. It's a three wheel, classified as a motorcycle. We're gonna have some fun this weekend taking it to Wheels and Waves, showing you guys. I caught him cheating again. So long I try to pretend. I keep on trying to make a bad boy good. Leave you for good, you know I never would 